Hi. This is uh, September the 2nd, uh, 2011. Just earlier this week and last week, uh, our nation, the east coast of our nation, was uh, assaulted by a hurricane named Hurricane Irene. It wasn't a very strong hurricane, but it was a big one, and it dumped a lot of water. And many of the fine folks up in the Northeast suffered unimaginable damage to their property because of the, uh, the rain and uh, the flooding. And uh, I've posted other messages on here about whenever there's a natural disaster, is it, is it God's wrath? Is God trying to punish people or in some sense warn them? And I've said that I believe that, that God is trying to warn us. He's trying to give us a glimpse of what he can do or what can be done. There are some things that man can't do anything about. We can't stop wind. You can't stop water. And you can't stop the earth when it decides to move. It's going to do what it wants. And uh, in the last week, or the week before last, we had an earthquake, and we had a hurricane. And I believe it's just God trying to get a lot of people's attention. I've said that about the earthquake in uh, Japan, the Hurricane Katrina, all the other things that have, that have brought disaster upon, our, upon different parts of our nation. And when that disaster comes, it, it doesn't just hit bad people. Good people, bad people, people of all economic uh, strata, people of all races, Christian people, non-Christian people, Muslim people, atheists, it doesn't matter. If you're in the path of a tornado or a hurricane, if you're standing up above an earthquake, it doesn't matter who you are or what you are, you are affected. And that's the way it is. A lot of people have uh, disagreed with me that these things can be acts of God trying to wake up a people and say, well, it's just natural, uh, you know, just natural uh, phenomenon. <clears throat> but God uses nature. He created nature. As I stated in an earlier video, the reason why uh, nature is groaning is because of sin. And that's what the Bible says. And what's really interesting to me is that, you know, mankind is, uh, who reflects the image of God, we're very uh, resilient. People rebuild and they help one another. That's a good thing. That shows some of the goodness that's in people to be able to help one another and care for one another and contribute to organizations that go in and try to help and so forth. Uh, I believe that individual people and churches do a whole lot more, uh, a whole lot better job than our government can do. Our government hasn't done a very good job right now down in New Orleans. They're suffering the effects of uh, Tropical Storm Lee. And they said after all the years and $10 billion since Hurricane Katrina, they still haven't fixed the levees. That's what the government does. That's the way they are. So much red tape and bureaucracy and politics that that's, they get caught up in that. But I was thinking how we rebuild things. And uh, I was thinking back to the book of Genesis when man... Uh, a man named Nimrod decided that he was going to build a tower to heaven. The first attempt and the first organized attempt of man to rebuild or to build uh, a religion based on man, humanism. People think humanism is a new thing. It's not. It's, uh, it's as old as the flood. Anyway, they built the Tower of Babel. We know the story. God confounded their language so they couldn't go on building. And everybody thought, well, that was the end of it. But that's not the end of it. I have here uh, in, on this video, there's a picture I want to show you. This is a painting by a Flemish painter named Bruegel. It's a painting of the Tower of Babel, his rendition of the Tower of Babel. Interestingly enough, when the European Union 
decided to build a new parliament building. They modeled it after Bruegel's interpretation of the Tower of Babel. They're trying to rebuild what God said we couldn't build. Been doing it for a long time. And that's what we do. Instead of following him, instead of putting our faith and trust in, in our creator, we try to build these monuments, we try to build religion, we try to build humanism, we try to build everything and leave him out. Why is the United States of America in the state it's in today? Because by and large we have kicked God out of the equation. He's not in there anymore. He's not allowed in school. We can't speak about him uh, publicly as a, in, in government. The government has to be uh, you know, no God. Well, that's why they're all a bunch of, as far as I'm concerned, they're all a bunch of crooks and criminals and liars because nobody cares about what God thinks. We're trying to build a kingdom. We're trying to build an earthly kingdom without him. And just like the Tower of Babel, it will be stopped. But when God sends his judgment, it won't be a, a Hurricane Irene or a, a 5.8 earthquake. When God begins to pour his wrath out on this earth, it's going to be unlike anything this world has ever seen. It will be ten times stronger than the Katrina. It will be off the Richter scale. Things will happen that will have never happened in history. Natural, supposedly natural phenomena. It will really be supernatural phenomena. Because our God's a supernatural God. So I encourage you. Pray for all those who suffered, uh, who's, who've lost homes, who've lost family members, who've lost possessions in, the, in these disasters. Pray for them. If you can help, if you can support some organization that's helping, do so. But the most important thing is if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you need to call upon him today. You need to put your faith and trust in the blood of Jesus. Because it's only going to get worse. God bless you, and have a wonderful day.